Okay, everybody, it's Good Friday. Let's have a word of prayer real quick. God, we thank you for tonight. We thank you that um, even though we're in our homes um, and we're not doing our normal thing at church on a Good Friday night service, uh, that we can still come together in our respective houses, celebrate you, worship you, honor you, and even have family time talking about the king of the world. We thank you for your sacrifice. We thank you for um, the shed blood at Calvary, right? We thank you, Lord, that um, you finished the work for us. And thank you that we get to share this gift with our, our children and our families and even um, those who will hear about this. And we declare that they will be saved as well. We love you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right, so guys, what I want to do tonight is I want to read uh, from the Gospel of Matthew. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John are considered synoptic Gospels or similar Gospels, but they, they tell a little different story. It's like it's three of you, right? Sit up. It's three of you, and you all would tell a story a tad bit differently. That's the same thing with the Gospels. Tell the same story. Like John would tell it from his perspective. And Matthew would tell it from his perspective. You understand what I'm saying? All right, so Matthew chapter 27. I'm just going to read a couple of verses, and then I'm going to talk a little bit. All right, so verse 28 of chapter 27. And they stripped him and put a scarlet robe on him. Who's the him? God. Jesus. Jesus. Jesus, right? We're talking about Jesus. And they stripped him and put a scarlet robe on him. And when they had twisted a crown of thorns, they put it on his head and a reed in his right hand. And they bowed the knee before him and mocked him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews. Then they spat on him, or they spit on him, and took the reed and struck him on the head. And when they had mocked him, they took the robe off him, put his own clothes on him, and led him away to be crucified. One of the other gospels says, during this time that they whipped him or they beat him 39 times, right? And the whip is kind of gory a little bit. The whip wasn't just this yeah, leather yeah, thing. Yeah. It was, yeah. right, it was leather, but at the end of it, it it's had spiky. like this little spiky thing, yeah. right? Yeah. Like you saw on the spiky Passion of the Cross, right? Like a spiky wash. Right, right. So when they would whip him with it, it would kind of dig into his skin and, and, and rip off skin and meat and stuff like that. that. Yeah. So um, after those 39, you know, stripes, they put this thorn on his head. Now, the thorn was like it was it was kind of spiky, too. Oh. And it was, it was like a crown. So when they, they put it on his head, they mashed it down into the skull, they pressed it to the skull and created like, you know, you can imagine like blood coming it, down or whatever. It was, it was kind of like the head thing with thorns. With thorns. That's the way to picture it, like a headband with thorns. They put it on there because it was like mocking. What does it mean to mock somebody? Like, like God says, no. Like, let him um, speak. Like God says something and you say what he says. Right, that's one way of mocking it. There is another way as well. That's definitely one way. What's the other way you think? Because, like they were saying, he is the king of all people and he is, they were saying, king of something. Right, it's like, it's like making fun of it. So Jesus was claiming that he was king. You're absolutely right. So now they're saying, oh, hail the king. Oh, hail the king. Since you were the king, look at your king now. So they're kind of talking about him. They spit on him, right? They beat him 39 times. And now, I want you to picture this for a second. Now imagine how beat up he is right now. Imagine he's, he's bleeding. He's weak. Imagine all of that. And then the Roman soldiers made him put his own cross on his back and carry it kind of up a hill. Now, I want you to imagine this for a second. You think you'd be able to do that? No. That's tough. I mean, it's probably hard to carry a cross up a hill anyways. He was limping the whole way. Yeah, imagine how hard it was. He probably limping. The movies show that he failed a few times, and he got up, and he kept carrying, because he was weak, right? It's hard. But let me tell you something. Somebody helped him. Well, along the way, because he kept falling, he kept falling, he was trying to carry it. They made a Roman soldier, not a Roman soldier, but another guy coming by. They made him help him carry up the cross, uh, carry the cross up the hill. But I want you to understand something. A lot of times people think that um, 
Jesus is this God that's kind of weak, soft, um, not strong. You know what I'm saying? But I want you to imagine this, though. Imagine how strong you must be physically, emotionally, spiritually, and mentally, psychologically, for you to be able to do that. Yes, he can move a mountain. But remember, he was 100% God, but he was also 100% human. human. Which means, as a human, right, he felt all that pain. That was hard for him to do that. God would feel all that pain. Well, but the human side of Jesus feels that. You understand that? So this is my point right here. Check this out. Y'all making great points. Here's my point. Sometimes we think that following Christ is this, you know, soft thing to do. But it's, it's Jesus was tough, man. You know, we call this day Good Friday, EJ. But for Jesus, this was his, this was the roughest day of his entire life. This is the day that he was crucified. He was beaten and nailed to the cross. This is that day that you watched the Passion of the Christ with um, How did they even Mr. Make the nails that long? That's not the point right now. The point is, uh, this is the roughest day for Jesus. But I want you to know something. He was tough enough to finish it. Even though it was hard, it was rough. Um, and I don't, I don't, this is my opinion. I don't know how many of us would be able to do what he did. But he didn't quit in the middle of it. He didn't stop when it got really, really hard. Right? He didn't get so frustrated because of the pain where he gave up and he quit. Right? As he was on the cross, the Bible says, he was hanging on the cross and he looks up and he says, it is finished. Like, I did what I came here to do. I came here to die for mankind and I didn't quit. And I did. Now, sometimes people go through tough, yes, my diary. I mean, I was doing work on a computer and I was watching Jesus Christ die. Um, it said that when he took his last, his last breath, breath he let it. Yeah. My, my, it was rough. It was hard for Jesus. They did a lot of things to bother with him. They pierced him in the side as he was on the cross. Oh, yeah. You know, they put vinegar all in their wounds. Yeah, it hurt. It to make it burn and hurt. It hurt. But Jesus finished. But he did everything else in yes. his yes. 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 But listen, he finished. That's what we have to remember about Jesus. And what he wants for all of us is when things get hard for us, they get tough for us, they get rough for us, we got to remember that we have Jesus who what? Finished. He did what he was supposed to do. Uh, we're athletes in here. All of us, we're athletes. Mommy ran track. She know how it was when she when it got hard out there. Yes. A lot of times, Mama would get out there running. The coach would be screaming, "What?" Finish. Push. <laughs> push. Yeah, finish. Go push. Push. Right. And that coach was expecting Mommy to try to run faster at the end of the race than she did maybe in the beginning of the race. Which some people may say, raise your hand if you have something to say. Um, some people may say that sounds a little bit crazy. Because now she's tired at the end of the race. How could you expect for her to run faster at the end of the race than in the beginning? She's tired now. But you got to push. Yes, Darren. Because if you run like really fast at the first, when you just start, you'll start getting tired and tired and then. Next thing you know, after you play, you're in last place. You're like, I need to catch up. And then you start trying to run really fast. You can't keep pace. That's why you got to keep pace. That's why you got you to run smart. Mm -hmm. The point here is, God calls for us to be Christ-like. What does that mean, EJ? To be Christ-like. Well, think about it for a second. Christ-like. To be like Christ, right? And so in our attitude, in our thinking, and how we love people, how we treat people. But I wanted to add a different element in there. Being like Christ also means being a, I just said, a what? Christian. 
Yes, but what did I just say? That F word, a finisher. Yes. Right? A finisher. To be like Christ means to love like him, you know, think like him, treat people like him. But but you gotta be a finisher like him. You understand that? Being a finisher, like when you guys are out there training hard, it's hot and you get tired, you gotta do what? You gotta be like Christ. You gotta be a finisher just like Christ. You're in the classroom and things get hard, you gotta do what? You gotta finish just like Christ. Yes, Diamond. Like you're taking the test and you're focusing too hard and you're like, oh my God, that you have to do and you just, you just, um, you got to do the best you can to finish. And then you finish it and the next thing you have an A plus. Well, the only way you can have an A plus, this is very important what you just said. If you focused all the way through the test and some people lose their focus and just bubble in anything because they're tired, they're not you know, focus anymore, they're frustrated, they don't want to do this, right? But at the end of the day, right, you got to make sure you finish. EJ, you got to learn how to be a finisher. Diamond, you got to learn how to be a better finisher. You got to learn how to be a better finisher. Mommy and Daddy, we have to be better finishers because none of us have as hard a day as this day was for Christ at that time. Like when you're running that mile, it may feel tough, but it wasn't harder than what Christ had to deal with. When you're working out with Mr. Doug or me or whoever and it feels tough, you think it's harder than what Christ had to deal with? Absolutely not. So when things get hard, what do we got to do? We got to think, I got to finish like Christ. When you go through something hard in life, you're embarrassed in front of people. People talking about you. Didn't they talk about Jesus? Mm -hmm. But he didn't let that bother him. What did he do? He finished. Did he quit? Nope. And we're glad he didn't quit because if he had a quit, we wouldn't be here. We wouldn't have a chance to be Christians. We would still be lost in sin, mm -hmm. right? But because he finished, we can be saved from sin. You understand that? So we call him Savior of the world, King of Kings. He's our conquering King. But we can't call him that if he didn't what, Micah? Die. If he didn't die, if he didn't finish, he had to say it. Finish. He had what? You had what? Finish. Say it, boy. Finish. No, you ain't saying it like I need you to say it. He had to what? Finish. Yeah, cool guy. He had to finish. And so what I want to do tonight is I want us to start a journey of finishing strong like Jesus. You understand that? Not just getting through the line, but finishing what? Strong. strong. Finishing what? Strong. Finishing strong. Because if he can finish strong, we can finish strong. We can strong. finish strong. Right? And just like when mommy's running that track, you guys are out there training, we got to finish strong. Now, anything we're doing, not just in sports, but in every area, right? Academics, our spiritual walk with God, we got to finish strong. But how we treat each other, we got to finish strong. Well, what happens if I'm frustrated with you? No, I got to finish strong. I can't quit in the middle. I can't stop. Jesus wasn't soft. If you can see a picture of Jesus, man, Jesus was a carpenter. You know what that means? Mm -hmm. A carpenter was somebody who built something. He was the son of a carpenter, so he helped his dad, his, oh, his yeah. earthly father carpenter. So he's probably hammering, picking up wood, all that. Jesus probably had cuts in his arms. He probably had, why do we think this picture of Jesus as this little soft, skinny, frail, like he's going to fall apart every time he takes a step, a hurricane come through here and blow Jesus away? No way. Jesus wasn't soft. And if Jesus wasn't soft, that means, and I'm a disciple, a disciplined follower of him, now I got to be disciplined. I got to be strong. I got to be strong right here. I got to be strong here. You understand what I'm just saying? All right, somebody tell me, what's the point of our conversation today? What is the theme of this conversation? I see Darren's hand, but I'm going to let the older ones go first. Jesus, um, well, Jesus older ones go Christ. first. I mean, Jesus about, like, saving, saving our sin. Okay, saving our sin. Okay, that's his start. What's the theme of our conversation today? That Jesus is the day he died and he threw out your cup and he finished and all that. I love it. 
let these doors connect and we have to be you, sure thing. Yeah, you said a, a, a good thing. You said you finished. That's what I'm looking for. The thing. What do you think the theme is? The finish strong. That's the thing right there, man. Jesus finished strong. We're supposed to finish strong. You mentioned it in there a little bit. The theme is the, the pretty much the the what the com the whole conversation is about. Right? And the whole conversation is, even though the day was rough for Jesus, he still what, Mike? Finish. Come on, man. You gonna be a finisher or what? Huh? You gonna be a finisher or what? Yes, sir. You gonna be a finisher or what? Yes, sir. Well, you gotta have a strong finish. It's gotta be a strong finish. We can't walk across the line. The Apostle Paul said this, right? He says, I finished my course. I run my race. In other words, he said, I've done a good job for Christ. I've done everything I could for the cause of Christ. Are you doing that? That's what I'm challenging you with. Mommy? But what does it really mean? What's that? Like, what? what? I finished my course? Yes, sir. You mean I, I ran my race? I ran it hard? I ran the I best I could? I did what I was supposed to do? Exactly. Boom, I'm done with my life. I'm good. <laughs> it's a figure, it's <laughs> figure of speech where he's saying, like, I live my life to the best of my ability. So everything you do should be done. Uh, so like when Daddy told me about um, when she stood and finished it. You finished yes. it? And it looked everything good? Everything you do, you need to finish strong. I have 15 pairs of shoes. Yeah, you're blessed. You're blessed. Let me see. One, two, three. Plus four slippers. Okay. All right, so Micah, what'd you take from this? Um, Sit up. What'd you bruh. take? How to finish strong, Okay, that's what you're gonna take from this conversation? That's good, that's good. Like, what about you, EJ? Finish strong more. What do you like, mean by that? Finish strong more often. Okay, give me more. Yeah. Hold on, Darren, your time's coming. Mm -hmm. Like in what situations? Like what are you talking about? You said finish the work. Give me, give me four sentences, bro. Like you just giving me fragments here. Give me something. Okay. Okay, can I challenge you though, EJ? In every area of your life, you make it a habit to finish strong. Okay. Not just in sports, yeah, you need to do a better job there. But in the classroom, you need to do a better job there, finishing strong. Right? In your relationship with your brothers, you need to finish strong. You understand? You take the challenge? All right. Let's see what you're going to do with it. No, no, come on, man. Make everything a joke. Shake my hand. All right? What about you? What would you take from this? What, when this conversation's over, what's going to be stuck in your mind? Say it loud. Stop. Like, three times. Here we go. 13 go ahead. Let's finish what you said. I finished strong. Yeah, you finished strong. You made guess what? Three times. That's you like keep talking about beating me in that mind. <laughs> We're going to see you next time. That's why you stopped him like 19 I'm seconds. Not yeah, you are. Yeah, you are. Yeah, you are. All right. Well, we're going to pray. We're going to pray. Well, next time, I'm going to no more answers. For real. We should be able to do that without that. Right? Right. So let's do it. Let's do it. Come on. Uh, bro, bro. Come on. Hold this hand from Okay. Lord, we thank you again tonight for um, the opportunity to get in your word read it, and, and talk about it. Thank you for being a great example of how to deal with tough times. Tough times are hard, but you know what, God? You did a great job of finishing strong. You did a great job of pushing through a tough time in your life and being a great example for us. Now we have a Savior who can sympathize with us, and we're grateful for that. I pray and ask now that you would 
Empower us to be better finishers in every area of our lives. Help us to remember that we got to finish strong to honor you in Jesus' name.